So we begin in Russia, where it's emerged that the funeral of Wagner chief Yevgeny Prigozhin has been held. His press service said that Prigozhin was buried in a private ceremony outside his home city of St. Petersburg. The Kremlin said President Vladimir Putin would not attend the funeral of his former ally. Services were also held for other leaders of the mercenary group, who the Kremlin says were killed in a plane crash last Wednesday. They included Valery Chekolov, Wagner's head of logistics. It's across straight away to Yulia Shapovalova, who's live for us in Moscow. So, Yulia, tell us more what we know of Prigozhin's funeral. Well, you know, so much speculation about the place and the time of his funeral. And now we've got reports that uh, actually the funeral took place. And uh, according to the wishes of his relatives, uh, that was a, a farewell, a closed farewell, farewell ceremony uh, to Prigozhin. It was held in a closed format in St. Petersburg, and only his closest friends and uh, family were present. Around 40 people were present there. Uh, the press service of Prigozhin invited all those wishing to say goodbye and uh, bid their farewell uh, to visit Porochovskoy Cemetery in St. Petersburg. Uh, um, and uh, that makes us presume that Prigozhin was buried there at the Porochovskoy Cemetery, uh, and uh, there his father is also buried. Um, uh, as he had the title of the hero of Russia, uh, he was supposed uh, to be buried with military honours, but we understand that none of that actually happened. Uh, Yulia, why do you think the funeral has been kept out of the public eye to the degree that it has? Well, it seems like the authorities wanted to avoid uh, uh, people to get together in large numbers uh, in one place. It seems like uh, the, the authorities tried hard to keep Prigozhin's funerals low-key. And uh, um, earlier, we saw some kind of activity in other cemeteries in St. Petersburg to kind of treat his supporters as really very many people wanted to get together uh, to say goodbye to uh, to. Um, Prigozhin to the uh, Wagner leader. And uh, obviously, we understand that uh, all those people who actually crashed in that plane crash uh, last week, they are presumed to be buried in different places to avoid crowds of people getting together. And as you mentioned, uh, President Putin uh, wasn't present at the uh, Prigozhin uh, funeral, at the Prigozhin burial ceremony as well. Uh, Yulia Shapovalova, thanks for that. Take this on. We can speak to Jack Marglin. He has extensively monitored private military companies. He's currently writing a book on the Wagner Group. Uh, joins us live now from Washington, D.C. Jack, thanks for joining us now. Uh, in reality, it's no surprise that this was done without any fanfare. Not really, no. Um, I mean, I think we've seen already that the Russian state has had to navigate a very uncomfortable line here. Putin referring to Prigozhin as a very successful businessman. Um, who's made some really meaningful sacrifices for the Russian state, but someone who made mistakes in his life. Um, I think, similarly, this lets them avoid having to confront more publicly the issues around Prigozhin and his service to Putin. Had it been a, you know, well-publicized funeral, would it have been extremely popular and, and widely attended? I think so. There's a sort of cult of Wagner within Russia. Um, we've seen recently ceremonies and memorial to Prigozhin, which the Russian state, I think, has been very intentional and in not shutting down. And those have been pretty widely attended, as well as car rallies that happened even before his death. So there's quite a large following of not just former fighters, but also folks that admire the Wagner Group and what they represent for this resurgence of Russian nationalism. So what now about Prigozhin's legacy and what kind of problem that presents for Vladimir Putin? So, first of all, there's the obvious uh, issue, the fact that Prigozhin represents the, the, the ability of Russian elites to uh, coerce the Russian state into uh, extracting concessions, right? So, by directly threatening uh, the Russian state, you might be able to survive, at least for a time. Um, we can also see that the Russian state doesn't have many much recourse to deal with problems like this, except through violence. And then, finally, there's the issue of Wagner itself, right? Um, the Russian state is in no hurry to get rid of this uh, this force, which has benefited them in, in, in Africa and in Ukraine. 
But at the same time, I think they're going to find it very, very difficult to take this mass of very experienced fighters, what has been in many ways an effective force, and either integrate that with the Russian armed forces or fold it into one of the existing private military companies, which are, in fact, controlled by Russian military intelligence. Could, could it indeed operate under the command of the uh, Ministry of Defense? I think they're likely to try. I think that what they'll encounter quite quickly is that a large part of Wagner's competitive advantage was the unique factors of its structure, the degree of arms that it had, the scale that it had, and it simply is not going to have the trust to enjoy those types of benefits anymore. On top of that, if you don't have a curator like Prigozhin, um, then individual fighting units aren't going to have the same level of autonomy in the field, which we really saw in places like Bakhmut, uh, where Wagner was able to apply tactics and be reactive in ways that the Russian military was really struggling to do elsewhere in the war in Ukraine. Could it, as a force, become any kind of threat to Putin? I think that's pretty unlikely at this point. There's not a great succession plan here. There's no one who's really well-placed to take over Wagner. And I think it's very significant that we haven't seen any statements from the Council of Commanders of Wagner since Prigozhin's death. So they, who have recently kind of come out of the shadows and been more outspoken representing the group, um, have been very intentional in, in not making comments um, and not conjecturing about Putin's death. Other sectors of sort of the Russia and far right and ultranationalist circles have uh, been pretty outspoken in their criticism of the handling of, of, of Prigozhin in general. Um, but Wagner commanders in general, they've, they've seemed to have remained much more quiet about this and are taking a more cautious line. All right, Jack, thanks for that. Uh, Jack Margolin speaking to us there from Washington, D.C. Thank you.